This video is sponsored by Pixel Heroes Tales of Emond. More on them in a bit. I'm not sure how amazing everyone's memories are, but I seem to remember saying something last year about how terrible gaming has become in terms of conservation of older material. We can talk at length about how amazing all the new tech is and how awesome games will be in 5-10 to 10 years time, but we're also hemorrhaging a worryingly large list of games that aren't supported by newer consoles. And so, I vow to make it my yearly tradition to talk about the games that are no longer playable, and trust me, this can be a yearly tradition until publishers start to value video game conservation, since in 2023, the number of games that went offline forever was genuinely staggering. I will never run out of games to talk about. And since this video has the potential to be very sad and worrying, perhaps we should take a moment to talk about a new game, and this is pretty perfect since this video is sponsored by Pixel Heroes Tales of Emond, a brand new RPG roguelike for mobile devices with a gorgeous pixel art style. You can assemble a team of heroes to battle across this war-torn continent full of bad guys and awesome boss fights. You've got three different kinds of hero summons to work with, so you've always got a good chance of picking up someone who can be the difference maker in your team, and Pixel Heroes is always running new events to help you out even more. There's the 3650 Draws event, where you can get more than 3,500 free summons without spending a single penny, and there's the new hero Gemini's Leela and Sariel who came out literally yesterday, so you should really get on that really. If this all sounds like your sort of thing, then you can play Pixel Heroes Tales of Emond right now by following the link at the top of the description, and if you act fast, you can catch the Hero Showtime event and get 50 Gemini Shards just for logging in for 7 days straight. Thank you to Pixel Heroes for sponsoring this video. Anyway, depressing sad shit now. I think the best place to start this surprisingly depressing video would be by talking about a game that many of you, including me, probably thought was already dead. That's the thing, a lot of games of online components lose their servers when companies decide to cut their losses on a bad game, or simply move on to something more profitable with just about any game. But if a fanbase is dedicated enough to keep a project going through their own means, then frankly anything can happen. Evolve is a game that died a very slow, very drawn out death that went through the full gamut of emotions as it sought to make good on its outstanding, award winning early pre-release promise, but it struggled with low player numbers and overpriced DLC, so it transitioned to a free to play model that briefly saw a resurgence, but it didn't last long. And yet, surprisingly long at the same time? You know, like when you go to buy a hot dog at a stadium and it's like, questionably long? From 2018 onwards, Evolve had a fascinating life, and yes, I realise this sounds like an obituary, but fuck, what do you think I'm doing here? Sensing a losing battle, 2K Games shut down Evolve's dedicated servers in 2018, leaving it to fans to keep this game alive however they could. And you have to say, despite concerns that Evolve's player numbers had dwindled past the point of recovery, fans were able to keep this game alive and functional for the best part of 5 years through a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer mode on the Evolve Reunited Discord server. I'm not too sure how much 2K games were involved at this point and if they were putting in any money to keep Evolve afloat on these fan-made servers, but it is damn impressive to me that fans of this game had discovered a model for Evolve that worked for significantly longer than anything that 2K games had done on their own. Either way, 2K Games pulled any and all remaining plugs in July of 2023 and took down Evolve in all formats in order to focus their attention on other projects. A weird scenario where the actual closure of a game technically came several years ago, but fans did what they could to keep it going and the publishers were kind of okay with it. Where can you find a reasonable publisher? Do they exist now? Just to play devil's advocate for a spell, do you ever think that video games have become more disposable because they're making new ones more often? Yeah, it's a dystopian world for sure, especially given the insane amount of work that goes into these, but from a strictly black-hearted business point of view, maybe the axe falls on so many games because video game creation itself is now much more tangible? I don't know, that's my one and only attempt at justifying killing video games, but maybe I didn't have to go that far since Babylon's Fall is a prime candidate for deletion due to the fact that it's fucking shit and no one played it. 
And again, I feel for the people who worked on this game, but perhaps Babylon's Fall makes sense as a game that you can't play anymore, since the writing was on the wall for this thing so early, so much so that I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. There's been spectacular commercial failures before and some incredibly low Metacritic scores, and yet it's truly remarkable how quickly and badly things went wrong with Babylon's Fall. You know, it had Platinum Games at the helm, who have worked their magic on a load of high quality games, and they even had Bayonetta 3 come out in the same year, but Babylon's Fall ended up being a boring, deeply unfun experience from start to finish that few people cared about. So few, in fact, that the highest concurrent players was a mere 1,188 at launch, and infamously, that number fell all the way down to just one two months later. Babylon's Fall desperately tried to carve out an existence for itself for a year, but couldn't get things to work, and finally, it was put out of its misery in February of last year. You're telling me that we had to put up with a year of this, but Scalebound was cancelled? Make it make sense, please. It's important to remember that not every game gets replaced or even discontinued because it was just that bad. There's more than your standard level of morality and legality doing its thing in the background while video games are being made, and it's usually the hefty helping of copyright lawsuits that make the headlines. For a large part of 2023, this never seemed to be a concern for the creators of Only Up. Which, in case you were spending last year living under a whole pile of rocks, was one of the more viral game releases of 2023. You know, every year has that one game that everyone seems to be playing and every other video on YouTube seems to be covering. Whether it's Pokemon Go in 2016, or getting over it with Bennett Foddy in 2017, or even something like Power World in 2024. So, imagine a world in which the big darling of social media gets taken down because of copyright issues. Actually, that's not too hard to imagine with Power World. Anyway, Only Up was basically the 3D version of getting over it with bullshit platforming segments that were possibly badly designed on purpose so that content creators had an injustice to scream about as hours of progress went down the toilet in a game that has zero checkpoints and an equal number of fucks to give about wasting your time. It's, uh, it's not a great game, guys, but it worked with some people and was clearly more entertaining to watch than it was to experience for yourself if Twitch viewing figures are anything to go by. But none of this mattered in the long run since Only Up was riddled with copyright violations. This thing had everything from stolen 3D models from Sketchfab to stolen sound effects from Final Fantasy VII and Minecraft, and had even found some space for some NFT nonsense which Steam has had a widespread ban on since late 2021. Despite all of this, Only Up was briefly returned to Steam with all the illegal stuff removed, but even then, it was only there for two months before the devs took it down themselves due to stress, and now they've moved on to their new game. Hopefully they learn how to code in some fucking checkpoints. This video should hopefully outline just how temporary video games can be. It's a bit of a terrifying concept given how much extra drama and baggage comes with your average video game development cycle, but there are a shocking number of games that came out last year that didn't make it until 2024. Knockout City actually isn't one of them, but I remember seeing the reveal trailer in, I wanna say 2020 or 2021. Maybe it was a Nintendo Direct or an E3. Oh man, that's another thing we could talk about that isn't happening anymore. Anyway, the reveal trailer for Knockout City is a little notorious for not exactly exactly false advertising, but I suppose misunderstanding what the audience would be excited about. It follows a cast of colourful characters who are being interviewed about whatever the fuck, and it turns out that they're promoting this multiplayer dodgeball game called Knockout City. I never played it because this is a lot more interesting than this, and I struggled to transfer any excitement I had for Knockout City onto the actual game. Turns out I was in the relative minority though, since Knockout City did well enough for itself to pump out nine seasons worth of content, with a lot of the early momentum coming from a temporary free-to-play model for the first 10 days of release. EA helped to publish the game for its first year, which also brought in players from EA Play subscribers, but 2022 saw Knockout City go free-to-play and ditch EA as publishers, so that Velen Studios could self-publish the game. Evidently, this decision didn't go too fantastically, since it took about half a year before the 
the dev decided that they had to start calling time on Knockout City, with a February 2023 announcement highlighting June of that year as the day it would all disappear. I don't resent this game, since I'm sure Knockout City was doing some good at some point in its life, but evidently, it didn't quite have the longevity that the devs were hoping for. But every problem is just an opportunity in disguise, and personally, I want to hear her story. Let me play that game. The inspiration for this video came towards the back end of last year when I realised just how many video games were let go in 2023. Originally, I had every game in this video bumped up one slot to make room for the original Pokemon trading card game online thing that went offline after 12 years of service to make room for a new game. That was until the closing weeks of 2023 when the worst game of the year came out and was so bad and so misleading that its existence was mercifully cut down to just a couple of weeks because the day before was just that bad, folks. Like, as historically bad as we're ever likely to get. I almost feel like I shouldn't talk about the day before because there's a ton more going on here than simply a lack of digital preservation. Truth be told, I feel like the cautionary tale should be remembered more than the actual video game, since you can dismiss the day before as this horrendously awful attempt at a zombie game that promised so much but delivered basically none of it. We've seen kickstart scams before and I guarantee that we'll see them again, but what makes the day before such an insane case study is that we've rarely if ever seen them disappear so quickly. Chalk it up less because a developer fantastic seeing the error of their ways and more like a comprehensive backtracking and refunding to take the heat off of them and avoid any troublesome lawsuits, but it seems to have worked since the day before came and went so fast that it seems like we've all forgotten about it. Maybe in that case, we should have some kind of preservation in place so that people are more cautious in the future and fewer shady developers feel like they can get away with it? Or we can just pretend it never happened. Seems to work just fine for some people. Anyway, those are some of the games you can't play anymore. Do you agree with number one or is there something that should be there instead? Let me know in a comment down below and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more and hit that bell for notifications of every new upload. The last video I made was all about ranking tech in games, so make sure you go watch that. And I also want to thank my top supporters on Patreon, including Sarah Malion, The Green Scorpion and Scott Riker. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.